This is Plastic and Pixels, where I review video games based on the worlds of tabletop games. Today I'm going to be talking about what many people still consider the greatest Warhammer 40,000 video game to date, Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War. We're going to look at how it plays, how well it captures the look and feel of the setting, and we'll see if it still holds up. Let's get started. Dawn of War's story reads kind of like Warhammer 40k.txt. We start on the planet of the week, Tartarus. Things are looking grim for the Imperial Guard, as they seemingly always do, until Gabriel Angelos and his third company of Blood Ravens show up to save the day. Our prayers have been answered. Here come the Walk Space something. Marines! Side note, I'm of the opinion that Space Marines sounds kind of silly when people say it in-universe. It's a super pulpy, Heinlein-esque term that feels kind of at odds with the grimdark, Catholicism turned up to 10, World of Warhammer 40k. Anyway, the Marines slam down, kill a bunch of orcs that Sindri lured to the planet and the Eldar trying to stop them, and a wacky chase for the maledictum, an evil Chaos MacGuffin, ensues. The real villains here are the Alpha Legion, traitors forces of chaos that are the real big bads of both the game and the Warhammer setting at large. The resident inquisitor and only black dude gives Gabriel his neato hammer, the Blood Ravens take the fight to chaos, Gabriel's psychic librarian pal turns out to have been corrupted by the maledictum, an evil chaos artifact, because that always happens, he executes him gangsta style, smashes the demon prince, some hammy voice acting happens, and we can call it a day. While it's not an especially involved or new story for the setting, it's a pretty decent narrative for an RTS, a genre which is, by its nature, not super character driven. It's pretty clear that Relic took a lot of inspiration from Warcraft 3 for this game, which really laid the groundwork for the in-engine cinematics and hero-heavy gameplay of Dawn of War. Speaking of... Dawn of War did a lot of controversial and unusual stuff for an RTS, which is one of the reasons I think it's still so beloved today. It stripped out the resource gathering of StarCraft and Age of Empires, opting instead for passive resource gain generated by objectives you had to fight over. It had you build squads that you could upgrade with special weapons instead of just building dudes one at a time, and had units engage in both ranged and melee combat with separate abilities for both, which really makes sense in a setting with as much close combat as 40k, and gives the game some believability. You go, Terra Marine, just stand there shooting and... whoops. The campaign is a linear affair, over the course of which you unlock more units and characters that it gradually introduces you to. It's a neat campaign with some novel and memorable moments, but the real meat of the game is in the skirmishes and multiplayer. I've tried to find multiplayer games recently and had no luck, but I remember playing it online back in the day, and I've played my fair share of skirmishes. The four races from the campaign are all playable in these modes. Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Orcs, and Eldar. Again, drawing from the Warcraft 3 mold, all four races are distinctive, with wholly unique units, save for some overlap with Marines and Chaos, and in some cases unique resources and game mechanics that other armies don't get. Marines have a lot of deep striking abilities, befitting their nature as a mobile, hard-hitting strike force. Chaos gets gribbly demons and hordes of cultists, along with their harder troops. Orcs get hordes and hordes of troops to throw at every problem, offset with some really tough elite units, and a tech tree that progresses by building more and more shit. And Eldar are sneaky dicks who can turn everything invisible, hide in the corners of the map, and you can never fuck. What I'm getting at is that all the armies are really different, and that's cool. Every army also has hero units, who aren't quite as involved as the heroes in Warcraft 3, but are wholly capable units all their own. A force commander, especially in the early game, can really wreck house and call in orbital bombardments, while the Eldar Farseer can cast all these psychic powers to support friendly units and damage enemies. Each hero exemplifies the army they come from really well, and they add a nice strategic wrinkle to the game. The game is built in sort of a rock-paper-scissors damage model, with infantry, heavy infantry, commanders, buildings, and vehicles. So while it may look silly to have your bright lances and las cannons just kind of bounce off dudes, I get it for gameplay balance reasons. My only real complaint here is that it's not that hard to just turtle up and build a huge massive unit without much thought of strategy or counters and just kind of throw it at the other guy. That depends on your opponent, of course, but it can make it feel a bit light on strategy for a real-time strategy game. The moment you boot up the game, you're greeted with an explosive cinematic that paints a vivid picture of the 41st millennium, while also introducing you to the game's mechanics. Space Marines are holding their ground until they break cover to take an objective, only to get absolutely massacred by a superior force. 
It's bombastic, gory, and really gets you pumped for the game. It's actually pretty brilliant and still looks beautiful to this day. From top to bottom, this game screams 40k. No, I, I mean it literally screams it. Everyone in the voice cast is yelling. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Fall back and regroup. Kill! Kill! What a voice cast it is. There's some really prolific video game and animation voice actors in here, and nobody's phoning it in. It's also wonderfully over the top in a way that really meshes with the gratuitous violence and ludicrous setting of Warhammer 40k, and it infuses it with a comic book energy that's really charismatic. The weapon sound effects are still what I hear in my head when I play the tabletop game, and Jeremy's swools soundtrack is that perfect mid-2000s synth orchestra type of music you just don't really hear anymore. It really paints a vivid soundscape that complements the visuals beautifully. As for the visuals, the graphics and animation were excellent at the time, and are iconic enough that even during a huge battle, you can usually find your units and figure out what's what. The blasted cities are appropriately bleak, the thick jungles echo the oodles of 40k art set in jungles and those silly little plastic trees that came in the starter set, and the chaos wastes are suitably apocalyptic. It all looks and feels exactly how I pictured the 40k setting when I read the old 3rd edition rulebook all those years ago, and that's no small feat. Unfortunately, the RTS genre hasn't seen all that many big releases in recent years, so it's kind of hard to hold this up to recent paragons of the genre. Its biggest competition in that regard is StarCraft II, which is mechanically nearly identical to 1998's StarCraft I and Dawn of War II, a game that went in a completely different direction. On the other hand, though, this means that playing this now isn't like going back and playing GoldenEye and wondering how the hell you played this a decade or more ago. The gameplay is still responsive, the voiceover is still wonderfully quotable, the graphics, while dated, still definitely do their job, and the core gameplay is still engaging. The in-engine cutscenes, however, are kind of stilted and goofy just by the nature of the old Impossible Creatures game engine, and I think they lose a lot of narrative punch as a result. I think it's pretty telling that I still have this game installed on my computer more than a decade after release, even after hundreds of hours of gameplay. At this point, the game's so second nature to me that I just play it to chill out and get a quick 40k fix. I don't know how readily I'd recommend it to someone who's new to Warhammer or PC gaming though. A lot of the charm of the game for me lies in the nostalgia I have for that early mid-2000s era of gaming, plus my own personal roots in the 40k tabletop game. That being said, it's the game that spawned a million Warhams. Chances are pretty good that someone you know played this game and then went on to start an army on the tabletop or pick up a Black Library novel. Chances are actually pretty good that if you're watching this video, you already have the game installed and you're going to play a round of skirmish once you're done watching. I know I will. Thanks for watching my first Camhammer video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what games you'd like me to cover next and what sorts of other videos you want me to make. If you want to keep up to date, you can hit the subscribe button or follow me on various social media or check out my cartoon channel, Camtoons. Thanks for watching.